Okay. Um. As the government said, we are very, very proud to propose this motion because we believe that the long-term growth of the country and the peace within the country is what we must protect, and therefore we are proud to propose. So first, before starting off my speech, I want to declare the model and the paradigm that we are going to be talking in. So first of all, what are the autocracies? We say that the autocracies are the type of um, governments that have strong military and strict enforcement of law and order. We furthermore, we say that because of this, they can, ha they can like enact policies very quickly and effectively, for, which I will be explaining more in my point. And furthermore, all the projects they conduct will be executed based on the Constitution. Now, I want to clarify here that they are not the same as dictatorships because autocracies are not simply one leader controlling everything based on whatever they want to do. It is rather, there are several brains within a cabinet, which means we, we can assume that there is a reasonable amount of check and balance mechanism that exists within this system. And also, we say that because there are several people, it is overall a higher quality. Now, Furthermore, there is going to be an opposition party does exist in the system of an autocracy. However, they're just very unlikely to win in an election now. Um, and one party is the one that is going to be within the cabinet. Sure. Uh, no, thank you. Next, within about decentralized democracies, we say that these decentralized democracies basically means that there's a bunch of different types of political parties, religious, ethnic, and so on. And there are many of them, which means they're basically fragmented. And what happens in these countries is usually there's a distribution of the parliamentary seats, just like there is in England and so on. And by doing this, this means that there are many, many different parties, many, many different people with different opinions within one democracy, uh, within one government. Now, moving on to my point points for today. Now uh, that I've cleared that up, first, three points for today. First of all, mitigation of conflict and unification of country. We have two claims to make here. First of all, that tribalism and the, the fragmentation within the government is very bad. We say that it is very bad to have a decentralized democracy because there's going to be different people, different parties insisting different policies, which means it is very hard to reach a consensus. We see this in, and we say within the government, they have to be caring about what is best for the country. They need unification in order to actually protect the country. But we say that, for example, we see this from the fact that in India, when they were trying to decolonize from the Britain, they when they were all trying to aim for the same goal of independence. They were unified. There was no independent conflict. But the moment there were two religious parties that were created, one for the B Buddhists and one for the Hindus, I'm sorry, one for the Hindus and one for the Muslims, that completely divided the country. There was civil conflict there and eventually led to the division of the country to now create Bengal and so on. We say that that religious difference is what caused that. Furthermore, on the other hand, the example of Tanzania, there's over a hundred ethnic groups within that country, but the, the nation is united because of the same, um, because of the government system, because of they have one language and in the education, they teach a peaceful narrative. So we believe that rather than having these religions become political parties that pit against each other, we must unify them in order to aim for a better of the country as a whole. Now, second claim to make within this point, that autocracies execute um, situ these policies better as a whole because they can unify the country. And all overall, the nature of these divided religions is basically that these religions are strongly against each other and they consider each other as their opposition, which means they will practically do anything to oppose the other side. It is very similar to the situation that there is in America between li um, dem Democrats and the Republicans. For example, Trump only wears a doesn't wear a mask because Biden wears a mask. It is basically this whatever they do, I'm not going to do kind of situation that is going to happen because these countries are so deeply divided by religion there's this difference and we say doing those pitiful things without really caring about um those things without really caring about what's best for their country just to go against the other side is what's going to happen therefore autocr there will be no peaceful um effective execution because within the the parliament there's going to be constant division if it is a decentralized no, democracy. I... On, no thank you on the other hand for autocracies they're united so they can execute this better so what is the after plan we are trying to aim for we are trying to aim for a country where there is no um civil conflict why because civil conflict as we all know creates many deaths destroys this um goes against people's human rights and also without with peace peace in the long term. That is what we are trying to protect. So everyone's living standards can improve. Now, second point, strong economic policies. We say that these rap, um, that these Autocracies have a lot better way of carrying out effective and in some uh, rapid and radical 
um, econ economic policies. Why is this? Because there's no opposition party to stop them. As I've explained, within a decentralized democracy, there's going to be constantly opposition. And we say that this will this overall makes it so that it is harder to enact any radical change. We see this radical change taking place in a good way. For example, in the country of Libya, they had um, with Gaddafi, the government, they had the rapid economic growth because they took upon drastic measures to try to regulate these multinational corporations from America and China, such as putting high tax rates on them. What on? No, thank you. What effect did this have? They were able to protect their domestic and agricultural industries and have an overall GDP growth and overall improve the country without being exploited from these multinational co corporations. Same thing happened in Malaysia and Indonesia with the um, the governments of Skalno and Sahoto. This happened where they were able to unify the nation and take on these economic policies to overall improve the standard of the living because there was no opposition party going against them. And we say, especially the um we under understand that the opposition is probably going to come up here and talk about how the minority opinions are ignored. However, we say this is a trade-off we are willing to make because in the short term, a few minority opinions are going to be ignored, yes, but in the long term, no thank you. There's an economic growth of the whole country. Everyone's living standard goes up, including the minority and the majority, everyone as a whole. Now, third point um, about coping with the urgent situations, urgent problems such as COVID and terrorism. We say that in these situations, these um, op opposition having oppositions and overall needing to unite the opinions of many different people just takes a lot more time because there's a lot more discussion that has to go through them to try to convince the opposition and all that stuff we say that in these urgent situations like covid 19 singapore was able to act really fast because they had an autocracy they had no opposition that they had to worry about so they were able to act fast we say that in these urgent situations it is not always about what is the correct way what is the best way to solve the problem but rather how fast you can act whether it it was actually the best way to, for example, shut down a country and block in um, imports from like traveling and all that stuff. Whether that was the best way or not is a different question, but rather doing that quickly and effectively to try to solve the issue on the spot to save citizens' lives is necessary. And we say an autocracy is a lot better to do that. And therefore, because it is better for the long term and also the short term of urgent problems for the country, we are very, very proud to propose. Thank you.